optimist sees opportunities in every difficulty. Ladies and gentlemen, you're most welcome to your show, Star Chat. Yes, and our guest tonight loves to describe himself as a bold and assertive person, rather than humble, because he thinks leaders must be bold and courageous. He's a scholar and a religious one at that. He had his O and A level education at the Boko Senior High and Tamale Senior High Schools, respectively. He then furthered his education at the University of Cape Coast, where he had his first and second degrees, respectively. He also holds a master's in communication from the University of Ghana. Currently, he's putting finishing touches to his PhD program at the Cape Coast University, where he also serves as a lecturer, well, soon to be Dr. Mustafa Hamid. While a student at UCC, he became the general secretary to the local MOOCs and later the SRC president of the University of Cape Coast, even when he was a graduate student. Ladies and gentlemen, join us for dinner tonight, of course, for that great chat on Star Chat is the Republic of Ghana's Information Minister, Mustafa Hamid. Welcome, Mustafa. Thank you, Bola. And uh, glad to have you here. And many thanks for accepting and honoring our invitation. I'm humbled. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for all the kind um, introductory words, except to correct um, mm. um, what you put out, that I have a master's degree in communication. I actually you don't? Do not, yes. Okay. So I you have an in. MPhil in, in religious studies. Okay. And then, of course, as you said, inshallah, hopefully next year by this time. <laughs> You'll be doctor. A doctor, Mustafa. Mustafa Hamid. Hamid. Absolutely. How does that make you feel, though? Well, I, I feel excited these days, anytime. I, I pick up um, the thesis that I have put together. I mean, I just feel excited. I mean, um, it's, I'm, I'm somebody who naturally loves the production of knowledge. And nothing excites me more than books. Wow. And I wow. don't find anything more valuable to me on earth than books. Not and human beings. Not, not human beings, because... In my view, it is books that make human beings. In other words, human beings, in my view, are rated weighty or not weighty. Based on knowledge? Based on knowledge. Interesting. The, the substance that, that, that they I have. love my <laughs> intro already because it means that it's going to be an explosive interview. <laughs> what a line and way to begin. But welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, welcome, Thank Mustafa. You. Thank so, Starter is probably brought to you by Guaranteed Trust Bank. What did you rather bank with us? Bell Aqua Mineral Water, proudly Ghanaian. We're also grateful to Johnny Walker. Keep walking. And Stella Lodge in Takradi, they will let you feel like a royal. And a big thank you to StarFMOnline.com. That's Ghana's breaking news hub. Visit StarFMOnline.com for more news. This show is also live on Ultimate 106.9 FM in Kumasi. You're listening to us live on Empire 102.7 FM in Takradi. We are on Cool 103.5 FM in Ho in the Volta region. And also, you can like our page because we are streaming live on Facebook at Star 103.5 FM. My name is Bolare and our guest is Mustafa Hamid. Like I said, of course, our information minister and is ready to take his turn on Star Chat. Once again, welcome, Mustafa. And how have you been, Thank if you I should me. ask? Well, I've been well. I'm trying to keep well. Um, as you know, being an information minister um, is arguably um, the, uh, the most difficult task in, in, in a governance arrangement, in a democratic governance arrangement, let me qualify it. Because <laughs> when people's lights go off, then they call me. <laughs> they say, why are the lights out? And they expect you to give a reason. When um, people go to the ports, and they are frustrated with processes for clearing their goods. They call the information minister and they say, why are there difficulties at the ports? Um, when uh, people go to places for government services and they are not getting the right kind of services, then they are calling the minister for information. When inflation is high and things are not working, then they call the information minister. They call you on practically everything. So basically making it look like if you are minister for information, you must know everything from so, so, so to zoology. Is it like you, you must be the know it all and be it all as well? Because energy, health, finance, roads, communications, <laughs> like you mentioned. Exactly. It must be an arduous task. 
it's it's a very difficult tax bowler. Um, is it a daunting one that is you know maybe taking a toll on you or you relish it? Um, I'm not too sure <laughs> if if um um I relish it. Um, the thing is that I I love challenges, and you know there's a the the soldiers and my father was a soldier by the way. The soldiers say that hard at the training ground, easy at the battlefield. And and therefore, if... Um, Star and, and Jimmy FM. Cliff also said, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. You know, so when you go through difficulty, when you go through challenges, and then at the end of the day, you are successful, or you are declared successful, or you are perceived to have been successful, you have better satisfaction for it than if the task was perceived as easy from the beginning. And so the fact that the information FM. ministry is seen as a very difficult ministry, you know, for me, it gives me an opportunity at the end of the day, you know, to feel victorious and to feel triumphant and, and to feel that I have done well for myself and for my nation and vindicated the president's choice of minister for information. Can you let us in, uh, maybe for the first time, what did... President Nanadu tell you when you were commissioned to become the information minister. I mean, you've been with him, uh, yes, through different roles, and he, he, he's also a good friend or maybe a fa fatherly figure to you. But what did he see in you, and what did he tell you, Mustafa? Well, um, he said to me that he wanted me to go to the Ministry of Information because he knew Star um, because of FM. our relationship for the past 10 years that I have passion for his success. That's number one. And that I virtually understand his mentality on various issues. And quite frankly, that's the truth of the matter. Because in these 10 years, you would remember um, in the 10 out, seven out of those 10 years, I was teaching at the University of Cape Coast. And most of the time I was in Cape Coast. And radio stations would still call me and say, what is Nanado's view on this matter? And I would say it without calling him or anything. Because after FM. such an association with him um, for, for a very long time, you virtually, because as you go about in your daily interactions, informal interactions with him, he's telling you stories. He's telling you things about what he thinks about education, what he thinks about environment. So at a point in time, when they call you to ask you the, his view on education, you are able to say it without recourse to him. Do, 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 do you receive a regular briefing from him? I mean, is it on a daily basis, weekly? How is it like? He, he, you wouldn't, President Nana Akofuadu. Well, in, in the days of opposition, um, we, we really did not have institutionalized mm. meetings. We were meeting virtually all the time. I mean, um, but in government, it's different. I mean, in government, he's the president of Ghana, and therefore he's carrying a huge load, and therefore you would not expect him to make the kind of time that he made for you when you were all in opposition. I mean, when you are in opposition, you wake up in the morning, after breakfast, you come to his house, he comes out of his room, he's also dressed up, you sit down a while, you have a chat, and then you look at the where are we going, and then you go there together, and you go here. But together. now it's different. Now it's different. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> you just returned from a retreat FM. with the president. Yes. How, how was it? How was Pedro Well, it was, in my view, very, very successful. Hmm. And uh, the president briefed the media um, at the end of the process and he said to the press people that he believes that we had a very successful interaction in Pedriasi because when we went he said that in his opening address to us on Saturday morning he said that he had brought us there for three reasons he said that the number one reason was for us to take a look at our agenda, the, the program that we put before the Ghanaian people, um, for us to look at it sector by sector and to prioritize and to decide for ourselves areas in which we had comparative advantage that we could easily 
if you want, use as a springboard for scoring successes for this country. And which areas are these? Even before you move on to the second point, because you, you mentioned three things, but on the agenda setting, yes. in prioritizing, yes. which areas are we looking at? Three areas. Well, economy. You know, economy, economy, economy. The economy is it's non-negotiable. Getting the fundamentals of our economy correct is not a matter that can be negotiated. Um, number two is the agricultural program. Um, and then number three is the program of industrialization. Star okay. 103.5 um, FM. At the back of that is energy because it is energy that will drive industry. You know, it is agri will drive industry, energy will drive industry. So for you to industrialize, you need agriculture and then you need energy. And of course, you need a stable macroeconomic environment. And mind you, all of these per hour 2016 uh, manifesto is to create jobs, uh, grow the economy and create jobs for our people. Was he particularly worried about anything? No, he, he wasn't worried. Um, right from the one when he chose um, his first badge of uh, 36 ministers, he, he felt very upbeat and he has felt very upbeat since, um, especially after Pediasi, um, because he believed and that is what all of us believe, that the kinds of people that he has chosen in these 38 areas of our, sorry, 36 areas of our national life um, are the kinds of, the, the exact kinds of people that you should choose, you should have, you should want, you know, for national development. And therefore, he's not worried at all, um, at least up until this point. Because he believes that we have the team that is made the right choice. Yes, not even right the right choice. with people who are calling for the head of our minister for interior and uh, you know honourable Kandapa that has come up. And did you guys discuss it? What is his posture like? Well, um, he believes in the capacity of the. Minister for National Security. Star one and also 3.5 Minister, yes. He does. He stands four square behind the belief that these are the men who can deliver the job. And for uh, national security, that's uh, Noble Kandapa, and for interior is Ambrose Derry. Ambrose Derry. Correct. And the fact that people people have talked about um, Delta Force. Delta Force, uh, which we will delve into, but this is just yeah, an opener. Much, for you to I, yes. I, I, I get you. Mm. I mean, Normally, um, in security matters, the, the ability of security people to deal with issues are examined or felt, you know, after the issues have arisen, or have arisen, sorry. So, the Delta Fortis matter arose, and the people, Ambrose Derry, National Security Minister, IGP, etc., etc., have dealt with it. And I believe that they have dealt with it in a manner that is in accordance with law and that has put a lid on, 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 it. on it. Are you satisfied? I am. Does the MPP as a party recognize Delta Force as a group? No. Of course, it is not a recognized body per the constitutional arrangements of our party. Not at all. Star our party has known, if you want, recognized political groupings. And they are called Women's Wing. Mm. They are called Youth Wing. And they are called Nasara. So there's nothing like Delta Force. There's nothing like Delta Force in, in the political arrangements of the MPP, no. Did you use them during the 2016 elections? Oh, of course, in the in the Ashanti region where mm. they are based. So if you don't um, recognize them as a party, yes. why then do you using them as what and as a body known as what? You see, there are all sorts of groups. Mm. There, there was there was NAFOP, there was loyal ladies, there was taxi drivers for Nana, there was uh, 
the student group, I, they are forgotten the name, STUNAD, Students Network for Nana Ado. There was uh, elect, get Nana Baumia elected. That, that group, how do they call themselves? SENAP. Coalition for electing Nana and Baumia and etc. So there were many, 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 many groups. But what, so, but what I mean by recognition is that you don't recognize them as official entities. But you knew of them as Delta Force. Exactly. You just Star know that these people exist. Like all of these ones that I'm struggling even to remember, Stunard, Senab, mm. Loyal Ladies, etc., etc. They all existed. And everybody contributed their quota. So to that extent, yes, the per party recognizes that there will be groups. Perhaps there are others that existed, perhaps in Bumprugu or Hamley, that I don't even know about, mm. about who, who held the party. But when I mean recognition, I mean officially recognized organs of our party. Of your party. Yeah. What do you make of their actions? Well, their actions, as per what they did to the regional security coordinator and what they did in the court premises is contrary to law it is unacceptable and it is condemnable many have said that the president could have sounded harder on them when he addressed the media on monday some say he wasn't convincing enough do you share this opinion well i don't know what does it whether it is the action or it is the way <laughs> for me it is the action that shows a president's commitment to the rule of law and the actions that the security agencies have taken so far in in restoring sanity in in kumasi for me is the way to go and that is what vindicates the sincerity of the president in applying oh, the law that the way that it, it ought to be applied if he comes and he stands there and he says i condemn delta forces it is wrong we would and then nothing happens and they are not arrested they are not put before court what is that what do words do <laughs> I, I, are you following me so as far as i'm concerned what he said he said that he summoned the national security minister summoned the interior minister the and IGP. ordered mm. igp mm. and ordered them to get in there and work and restore sanity and get people arrested and put them before the law and that exactly is what is happening so that is enough very well so Star under democratic arrangements that's, that's that's what you can do have they embarrassed your government in any way oh certainly 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 i mean for a party uh, that gave birth to a government that prides um itself as a rule of law party uh when when the locals say that hey don't move for when they refer to the MPP as Domo for that's what they mean, that we are democracy people, people who believe that, oh, this rule of law people, these are people living, say, on the streets of Ghana, hey, could go to four, no, no, near day. That, that's what they refer to as. And all of that simply means people who work according to law or book or so on. So for people, who, for textbook people, let me put it that way, or book long people or democracy people, certainly such actions are embarrassing. Honorable Minister, Maybe permit me to call you Mustafa. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Fantastic. Does the government condemn the attacks on the interior minister? And also, I mean, the, 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 the national, national security. security. Regional security coordinator, rather. No, I'm oh. talking about Honorable Kandapa. Yes. Yes, you know, in charge of national security. Mm -hmm. I mean, Honorable Kennedy Japan has come out, you know, to talk about it. And also, Chairman, for your Ashanti region, uh, Chairman Moon to me, over the Delta Forces. They have dared him not to touch the forces who has dead who what to me says he, i mean he should go ahead the national security coordinator should even attempt to touch the delta forces yes. we are calling for them to be disbanded and all of that we've heard kennedy in japan saying that these are people who work for the party and clearly they shouldn't be touched what is your take on that well my take on that is that there are two two issues involved in this matter um I disagree and very strongly Star with the part of the speech that FM. says that people who worked for the party and who violate the laws of this country should not be touched. That one, it's, it's unacceptable in any democratic arrangement. So I, I disagree with that. But I agree with their right to express their views. 
but I disagree with those views. And I also disagree with the saying that governments can infringe on people's right to association. You cannot do that. I, I said it yesterday on another station that, you see, the Constitution guarantees people freedom of assembly, okay. association, association. Mm. and by association means uh, naming yourselves. Okay, and yesterday I gave a typical example, and I'll repeat that. I said, well, in this room, we can decide that today we have formed a group called Intellectual Bombardiers. That's our name. Nobody can stop us from forming an association called Intellectual Bombardiers and, and going about our activities. But, as they say, your right to swing your arm yes. ends mm. where somebody's nose begins. Mm. If we use this Star Intellectual Bombardiers to FM. infringe on people's rights... We ought so it's, it, it, it's, it's their actions and not the name. Absolutely, absolutely. Really? I, oh yes. It's not. It's not about names. A rose will still smell as good even if it was called by another name. So it's not about names. It's about what they do. But how would you feel? I mean, if somebody will go out and they call themselves Terminator and is your CEO of an organization, will you be comfortable? <laughs> is it is it accepted? Or maybe a name that I cannot even is not airworthy for me to you know say? Will you be comfortable? That person serves in your government. <laughs> Will you be comfortable even pronouncing that name? <laughs> well, I don't see that um, there is there is anything. Um, you think there's nothing? Shall to I name? say, uh, if somebody calls themselves Delta Forces, and we are talking about Delta Forces, yes. I mean, what is it? What 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 is so? No, we brought that an analogy of about it, Delta some forces. bombardiers and all of yes, that. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So whatever you call yourself, do right mm. by the society and by the laws of the country. That's all I'm saying. If whatever you call yourself doesn't bother anybody, but if you begin to use whatever you call yourself to infringe on people's rights and destroy Star public property, as well, that one, we will hold you responsible. Interesting. We have loads of messages coming <laughs> in for you. Interesting ones, I, I should say. But of course, uh, this one says, Bola, thanks so much for bringing our information minister to Star FM. He's, he's indeed a man of his words. He honored his promise on the Super Morning Show yesterday. Kudos to him. And that's from Bliss in Dakuman. Thanks so much that uh, you have him on Star FM today as well. Well, thank you. Bola, I'm also Mustafa, but please tell him I love him. And I use his name to boast in class. Yeah. Okay, well, good to know. Please tell the minister that I love his style of answering questions. And that is, if he doesn't have an answer to a question, he will tell you he'll get back to you. And indeed, he's honored his promise. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mami Esiegan, lovely show, Bola Ray. Well, thank you. And uh, Mario Messi says, I'm watching live streaming from Sweden. And I'm enjoying this interview. Are we well, live on? Yeah, we are live on Facebook and live on the internet. <laughs> I'll start from online. So, yes. Well, you should have told me that. <laughs> this one is from Kofi Ja in uh, Achim Akrosu. Says, please ask him, when is the president going to appoint an independent prosecutor for us? Okay, maybe you want to take this before I move on to the, 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 yeah, the, the in next May, one. In May, when parliament reconvenes, there will, a bill will be put to parliament um, to be passed into law. That will establish the office of the public prosecutor or special prosecutor. Right. So there you have your answer. It's right here on Star 103.5 FM. Now we'll get into your childhood. Where did you grow up, Mustafa? Um, in Tamale. I was born in Tamale in 1971. Um, I'll be 46 in June, June 14. You're quite young. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you've done a lot of things anyway you let's go so in tamale yes mm. i was born in tamale and then uh, my father was a soldier um he's popularly in tamale they call him saje and saje in dagbani is this dagbani corruption of sergeant sergeant okay yeah yeah, yeah. he was sergeant hamidu yakubu um he was at afrtc armed forces recruiting training school in tamale um and then my mother was a teacher now she's retired she retired as a um uh, assistant director ghana education service in 2009 um so i grew up in tamale went to station experimental primary school in tamale which is in the kamina barracks as you read earlier went to bokuseg went to Sufom in tamale secondary school went to university of cape coast went back to university of cape coast for my masters um you know came out did various jobs advertising company media companies etc eventually became national youth organizer of the npp um and then spokesperson for a kufuado 
all of this while you pay your dues, but we, we stay in school and we'll get into you know marriage and all of that. Yeah. But like they say in Tamale, Yayade. Lafi Alo. Lafi Alo. I love that. Okay. So, in, in getting into it, how, how was it like at Boko Secondary School? That's where you had your O levels, right? Yes. yes. Boko Secondary School. Yes. When was the last time you, you, you visited uh, this great school? Um, Boku Secondary School, um, the, I go to Boku quite a lot. Um, sure, last year I was in Boku a few times because of campaigning but unfortunately i didn't enter the campus you no neglected the school <laughs> you need to go back <laughs> well Mr. i'm a very Minister. active member of the old students association and i pay my dues and etc so all right i believe that i'm contributing my quota wow so um, were you active during your school days were you into sports were you into entertainment were you into no this has always been me i i was in the debating, debating club, club. Ah, <laughs> what a smart. this has always been me um because i was in the debating club um always debating you know with other schools and so on and so forth and i'm sure that's part of the reason i'm a politician okay you know but somewhere when i got into secondary school from three um life became very difficult things turned around 360 degrees and I almost fell out of school. What happened? We'll like because to hear Because mm. my dad um, went into exile. You know, in those days of coups and counter coups and this one, he was accused by the PNDC of, um, of attempting to overthrow the PNDC. And he was, Star as they say in Ghana, he was wanted. <laughs> and so he, he went into exile. At that time, I was living with him because he and my mother were divorced ever since I was like three years, four years, you know. So my father was my only support. And he he was in charge of Russian. He was the army store man. And so food was not a problem at all in the house and so on. But when he left, now he has to go into exile. exile. And mm. then all of a sudden, my world came crashing. crashing. Mm. Um, and But somehow, as they say, you know, sometimes words that people say are powerful that's when i turned adversity into strength and into determination because at that time then i sat up and told myself okay now i'm all by myself in mm. this world mm. and so at age what from three you must be what from 14, three, i went to i went to secondary school from one at age 11. okay so i was about 13, 13. years okay wow and sharp, so, sharp boy <laughs> sharp boy so i told myself that look books are the only way by which i can liberate myself from this difficulty some all by myself and i made that determination so bola you ask my friends in boku secondary school I, in form three that's when i began to be able to sit at a desk from 8 p.m to 6 a.m you're joking yes 8 p.m to 6 a.m you know what happened was that yes. and, and at that time there was no electricity there was no national grid in the north where we, i was doing this with lantern wow yeah with lantern because what happened was that even money to buy textbooks had become a problem what a story so what happened was that in those days in the north um there used to be this phenomenon of people who whose parents were could afford something a little that when we vacate especially during the, they come to the south and they attend holy vacation classes and so when they are coming back to the north they come with textbooks pamphlets we used to call them pamphlets that were compiled by big names like tech kitchen we used to have names in government in economics so when somebody says ah, i went to, to tech ideas. Ideas. and all those <laughs> kinds of things yeah there were popular books called economics without tears yes. mm. economics made easy all of those things and then they would bring those books mm. bola what happened was that i couldn't afford these books Star and so what i would do is that i would FM. buy exercise books and then i'll come and borrow economics without tears from you and say please can you give me three days to read this book and give back to you so when you give it to me three days you know what i do bola no i copy the entire text you did that Star Star like, I copy the, that's what accounts for the good handwriting that i have <laughs> because because i kept writing I kept what? writing. Well, I, I would write and then I would write they know the entire name. book. They don't know the story. <laughs> and you know, in the writing, hmm. you know, as you are writing something, you are basically learning it. And so by the time I'm done with copying economics without tears, virtually the entire book is you in my copy head. Copy the whole textbook. Yes. 
That was plagiarism. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'm quoting them anyway. You know, but, yes, you did that. I did all that. And then, so when we go to um, Form 4, mm. and we're choosing subjects, whether to do business or arts or this, that. What did you do? Science, business, arts? I, I did arts. Okay. But initially, under the influence of my friends, and I have a very good friend in Tema Community 1. He's called uh, Bauer Stars. And under his influence and then uh um, mrs ajay was one of them i i rem i've forgotten a few of the names because all of them went to the business class so i followed them into the business class but after a few weeks mm. i was having a great difficulty with with especially accounting and statistics at that time in bokusek if you were doing business you were required to do statistics mm. and so but i realized that i had a difficulty with the figures and so on so about three weeks into the class i left and then I walked back into the arts class, <laughs> you know, and then I, I took arts. Then in Form 5, when we were just about writing O-levels, at that time in Bokusek, when you were an art student, your, the science subject you were mandated to take was health science. Mm. But at that time, I was finding difficulty with Star health science as well. So FM. I went to the senior house master, one Mr. Daoud, and I said, Mr. Daoud, you know, I want to substitute health science for agri. He says, at this late hour, and I said, please, I beg you, otherwise I will fail in the science subject. So he said, okay, take it. So he registered Agric. Now I went and took the Agric book again. I had to copy the whole Agric book and learn it a few months to all levels. Level. Yes. And I got a three in agriculture. What kind of woman did I Christopher. Wow. So it was a great difficulty. And and then I came to see for me in Tamasco. And in Bokusek. But no regrets at all. No, 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 no. I have no regrets. So it means that that's why I said that I virtually turned adversity See, into, yeah? into something mm. positive. I mean, my father's exile sort of kind of gave me, gingered me up to succeed. You had a girlfriend then? No, no, uh, no. You were a no. chua. Absolutely. All the way till I finished see for me, I didn't know what was girlfriend yeah because what what did i have a poor boy mm. you are even struggling to eat and you want to add another you know, human time you have for all of those matters <laughs> so <laughs> I, I just went on learning and learning and learning and learning and then when i came to so forth, you had a nickname um no i had no nickname at all i was just are you sure yes until until ucc i mean ucc when i went to first year they named me sly <laughs> sly why <laughs> because when i entered ucc in 91 apparently there was a young man who left that same year. Okay. Uh, who was very brilliant. He got a first class in Bachelor of Commerce. And he was in Kesley Hayford Hall. And he was like okay. me. Okay. Okay. And his, his nickname FM. was Sly. So when I came out, they started shouting, Sly, go, oh, Sly, come here, Sly, oh, Sly, oh, Sly, oh, you know. So okay. then they started calling me Sly, Sly, and Sly. And I mean, so so that's how I think they you know where you met your, your, your first girlfriend? Um, No, must have been after Sephorn. Yes, after but you are saying I'm saying UCC. Is that where? No, 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 no. no. After set form. After set form. Okay, after right. When I was doing national service, mm. that's when you know I got into the influence of all of these <laughs> uh, friends, friends, <laughs> and they began to teach me some tricks. Is she the one you got married to? Nah, absolutely oh. not. Why absolutely after not? Form, mm. Oh yes, oh yes, I remember. Yes, because we met in 1991. That's true. So she's the one you're married to. Yes, actually. Oh, well, so I, that there was somebody before because there is no, 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 no. That's what I said. I absolutely, mm. because I, 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 we met in 1991. Yes. Um, we got married in 2002. Wow. So you did it for almost 11 years. Yes. Wow. You wow. get the point. And then in 2000. And eight, I married again. So I have two wives. Oh, you have two wives? Yes. How does it feel to, you know, have two wives? <laughs> Is this something well, special? I mean, yes, sir. But you don't try. <laughs> <laughs> well, lie. You don't lie. lie. <laughs> Is it a good feeling? Why shouldn't I try it? You are in it. Awoji is a very minister. Good minister, I swear, <laughs> Mr. Fato, we got this. It's a very what? Don't don't try. So which one do you love the most? <laughs> the first one or the second one? Me. Yes. Well, according to the Quranic principles, yes, I am mandated to love everybody equally. So I equally. Try. Yes. So you try. I try. I try. Is pa. that what you are doing? You try. Pa. Pa. So which one do you love the most? First, because if you love this first one, yes. you would have stayed there, but you wanted to add on. Yes, the Quran will permit you, but all of yes. this. You know, as for me, mm -hmm. 
I agree with Dr. Nkrumah when he says that man is by nature polygamous. You know, I don't know whether that is a justification for my polygynous behavior. But you are the third one. Oh no, I absolutely not. Ah. I have closed the matter. Oh, you've closed. <laughs> I've closed the matter. Really? Completely. Ah. Completely. Uh, How does so I have and I have five children. Five. five. Children, yeah. Um, the first one has three, mm. and the second one has two. You done or you still? Yes, I'm. I'm done on that matter. I'm closed uh, as well. <laughs> Star um, so I have five children. My firstborn is in the University of Cape Coast. He's in level hundred. Really? Oh yes. He's wow. he's called Zaki. Wow. He's in Kisley Ford Hall. Wow. He wants wow. to be a politician. He wants to be a, so he's like the dad. Student politics mm. and so on. Mm. I want him to stop, but he doesn't want to stop. <laughs> so I let him cut. So how do you share your time now that you are also busy and all of that? So you have what two rooms? You keep two rooms. Absolutely. So you have one house. Absolutely. No. 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 Oh, you keep two rooms. Yeah. So you sleep Monday to Wednesday. You are somewhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the what, other one. What, the, so what a life. I want you not try it. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling you don't try. Don't envy me. You are lying. <laughs> wow. And they are okay. They are all okay. They don't see that boy. You're spending time here. And... No, I, I've never met somebody with two wives. So... Really? Yes, no, no. Ah, I, I you... mean, I, I know that people have two, but I've not engaged them on you know s such a platform. So I, I really want to get some insights. Yes. Mm. Because not that I have plans of having two wives, but I want to know. And... But you, you cannot. You are a Christian. <laughs> Three if you want, yeah. you have to convert. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so how how is it like? I mean. You, you, no, as I, you, as I said, mm -hmm. you, you try, um, as the Quranic principles stipulate, you know, to to share your time equally between here and there and whatever you are perhaps buying for this fellow. The next time you should try and buy it for the other fellow mm -hmm. to balance it. Even in terms of the children, you have to try not to show favoritism wow. Wow. Um, between the children and treat all of them equally so they can be brothers and sisters and mm -hmm. bond together mm -hmm. and do not see each other as stepbrother. It's a difficult balance to take. But as I said, I'm trying. You're trying. Interesting. Oh, we just have some 50 minutes to hit eight. And lots of messages coming in. We'll be going for a commercial break, but some messages here. This one says, Oh, I love this man, Bola. He's so genuine. He's too much. Minister, I salute you. And that's Sylvia. We listen to him at the University of Ghana, Legon, and we love him. Okay, Sylvia, thank you. Bola, Mr. Fahamid is one of the reasons we can comfortably say that Nanado has the men of competence to run this country. It is well. My name is Flint in Ashalibotri, and we salute you, Bola, for this great show. Well, thank you, too. Can you ask Honorable Mr. for how and where he met Nana for the first time? Mm. I'm surprised how Nana maintained him as his indefatigable spokesperson for all these years. And I love his eloquence. Echo Anaman in Asamankese, listening to you. So how, how and where did you meet Nana? Do? Um, I met him inside the party. As I said, because my father went into exile, um, quite frankly, even at that young age, I, I, I was bitter against Jerry Rawlings, quite frankly, because when I came home on Star one vacation and our, the room was locked and I sat out from around 11 a.m. all the way to late night, nobody was willing. People were just walking around me. They were not willing to. So I thought my father had gone out and he would come home at night. Then later on, the landlord said to me, he says, my brother, your father is wanted and he has run away. Just like that. That's how they say it. We're he, he, he's run away. And I said, what? Who, is, who, is, who wants him? And they said, Jerry Rawlings sent soldiers to come and arrest him and he escaped and so on. So, I mean, naturally, as a young boy, that, the name that they mentioned, he said, Jerry Rawlings wants your father. He's not, it really is a PNDC. <laughs> And so, frankly, I, I felt, General Rawlings, you treated me Very badly, bitter. almost ruined my future, and so on. So when I grow, mm. I will fight Jerry Rawlings so my father can come. Oh, he said that? Oh, absolutely, to myself, quite Star frankly. And so my initial FM. instinct was to go into the army and also organize a coup. That oh, so at one time, you contemplated organizing a coup? FM. Yeah, like if I go into the army, mm. then I would also mobilize troops and overthrow PNDC so my father will come home. Because I didn't even envisage that we will be in a democratic era one day. I Who's thought that Jerry Rollins. Oh, no. Jerry Rollins. Oh, no. Frankly, I, I am no longer. I used to be very bitter, frankly. And up until 1992, when the ban on party politics was lifted, which is why I joined MPP without hesitation, straight away. Because by at that time, the Nkrumah's parties were splintered. 
we had National Independence Party, People's Heritage Party, this, that, that, that. It was only the Dankwa Buzeis who were organized. Mm. So straight away, when lawyers Pio came to Boku, uh, University of Cape Coast in 92, actually from 91, when it was Dankwa Buzia Club, he came and was registering young men to become foot soldiers for the party. That's when I registered, together with Rex Fafa Dogwe, uh, Bill Kwansa. Bill Kwansa is now late. Rex Fafa Dogwe is And it was to fight Jerry Rawlings. Them. Yes. And then we all went in and we said, let's fight Jerry Rawlings. I mean, Sung Yara Haruna Kalis Tuesday, in Afa, I can name all of this. Mm. Okay. And then I was bitter. So we were campaigning hard so that, you know, Jerry would be ousted, I mean, through the ballot box this time so my father can come home. Because... 92, Jerry Rawlings announced after he won that he had granted an amnesty. Um, all my father and all of them can come home. But my father and his colleagues, some of his colleagues said that they didn't trust him, even though it was dispensed. So they would not come until he was out of power. So I was determined to continue fighting until NDC, which was what he was leading, was out of power. So my father can come home. You see my passion for NPP wow. and against NDC. NDC. Uh -huh. So you see, there's justification passion. for everything mm. that somebody does. So I am MPP because it was a passion that I had to fight a system that had kept my father mm. locked out of this country from 1985 and it was during this to struggle that you met up with Nanado. Yes, and so um, then in the struggle, mm. um, we didn't win 92, we didn't win 96, Six. then we won 2000. We won 2000, I ran for national organizer in 2001, and then I lost. Then I ran for national youth organizer in 2002, and then I won. And then I became a member of the National Executive Committee. So Nanado would come for National Executive Committee meetings, but we never really met. Until 2005, when one day after National Executive Committee meeting, he called me and said, young man, come. And then I came. And then he said, I want to see you in my house tomorrow. Star and I said, okay, I'll come and see you. So the next day I went to his house at East Legon. And that's when he said to me, he said, I admire you. You are a young man. I will observe you. You are brilliant, etc. I want you to come around and help me, I have a, a political project in mind. And then when we succeed together, we can help each other. I, I didn't say, let me go home and think Thank about you. it. <laughs> Whatever. You accepted it very <laughs> well. I said to him, Masa, I'm, I'm with you. We follow you all the way. And then, then we started the and underground you are today. and so on. And then now today I'm minister. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> wow. So that's the story. You heard it right here on Star Chat. And lots of messages are coming in. That Sylvia, well, we've read that one already. Baba, listen to us in Teaching English. says, he's a sweet, handsome man. Can I be his third wife? <laughs> okay, so that's one. We should pray that none of the wives are listening. <laughs> <in it. laughs> and Akofa says that that's a gentleman right there. Brilliant and outstanding in his field. I wonder why Otiku Jabba attacked him. Did you hear of that? Yes, I heard that. Um, um, I don't think that it was an attack. I think that it was her misunderstanding of two issues. One, mm. her misunderstanding of what albinism is. Mm. And then number two... Let, let, let's hear how she put it, and then we'll come back okay. and we'll talk about it. You have persons with disabilities. Somebody just takes a picture without asking their permission. They think that every uh, disabled person should be a beggar. I've met disabled people in the university. Um, in the previous administration, there was a disabled person yes, as a minister for culture and chieftains. Mm -hmm. Our regional uh, minister in the central region currently, Rabo Duncan, is also a person with disability. Mm -hmm. uh, persons with uh, albinism in some places are su not supposed to even operate, but our minister for information, Mustafa Hamid, is an albino. I met the Minister for Gender, mm -hmm. Liberia. Mm -hmm. She is an albino. How did you take this? Did you laugh or you, you were you were angry, furious, you were indifferent? <laughs> Tell us today. Uh, no, I, I, I laughed quite frankly. Oh you did? Uh, yeah, I laughed. I laughed so hard. Star and the fellow who showed it to me was very and surprised. And he said, Why are you laughing? This is serious as she says you are an albino. No, yeah. And I said, But albinos, first of all, are not disabled people. Mm. So mm. she has a complete misunderstanding of disability. So to that extent, it's a matter that we should laugh about, frankly. I just Have you met her after this statement? Have yes, you? later on she, she called me. Okay. And she said, Oh, my brother, people are trying to draw a wedge between us. And I said, I know. And she said, Oh, oh thank you very much, my Star brother. But I apologize if I have caused you 
any um, misfeeling or ill feeling on and so that is greatness yes, right there yes, and i salute yes, you for that yes yes because when i heard it i was worried as well i said what what would be your reaction no, no, no. do you find me disabled in certainly any not I, very I, brilliant I, child oh absolutely wow <laughs> you have two eyes <laughs> 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 I don't know. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. <laughs> this is Star Chat with Bonnery. We'll be back. Star 103.5 FM. Simply the best. I wake up in the morning, it's a new day. And I got bills that I have to pay. Now you're running late, running out of time. Feels like the world is waiting in line. But all you gotta do is pick up the phone and just dial. So whatever you do. I don't need to write or cash a check. I don't need data or internet. I have something that's faster than a jet. Just like mm -hmm. what they're talking about. You could have be a bum wine This is simple banking for every Ghanaian. Just dial star 737 hash and follow the prompts. For further assistance, call our toll free line 0800 124 Guaranteed Trust Bank. Guaranteed Trust Bank. Wouldn't you rather bank with us? <laughs> Wow! Ghana is 60 years and MTN is showering you with loads of prizes. Why you ready, Anna? My you ready, Pa? It's my birthday in March! Mmm! Then you can get a free cake! Go me! What if I just want to go to the movie? Aha! Then we'll give you free tickets or pay for your Uber ride. Kwe! What if I just want to call my loved ones? Yen chot socks, kakwa! Then you can get 60 minutes free talk time! Eh! Hey, I also need to take more pictures and upload Upload them on Snapchat's base. <laughs> no problem. We are giving away 4G phones so you can experience MTN 4G. Yay, yay! This match gonna be lit. Keep using your MTN number from 1st to 31st March and stand a chance of winning amazing prizes in the MTN Big 60 promo. Dial star 515 hash to check unique offers just for you. Terms and conditions apply. MTN, everywhere you go. The sun is so bright and I'm feeling so dry I need something to quench all my thirst Something so pure and so healthy Bella for Bella for new life every day Your new generation mineral water Generation Mineral Water. Look out for the elegant red label. Give me no life every day. Bella Star 103.5 FM. Simply the best. Right, so welcome back to the show and a very big thank you to Bell Aqua, Pauli Ghanaian, Guarantee Trust Bank, wouldn't you rather bank with us? And also to Stella Lodge and Apartments in Takradi, feel like a royal. Johnny Walker Black Label, keep walking. And StarFMOnline.com is Ghana's breaking news hub. Visit StarFMOnline.com for more news. And of course, you can also join us on Facebook Live, Star1035 FM. Our guest is right here, Ghana's Information Minister, Mustafa Hamid. Mustafa, welcome back. Thank you, my brother. Yes, and lots of messages. This one says, good evening. Thanks so much for bringing my mentor so close to me this evening. I can't even get out of my car. His dexterity, articulation of the Queen's language is just too much. I really want to meet this man. Bula, make this dream come true for me. My name is Kendrick in Banana Inn. Did he leave his number? I'll call him. We'll call, oh, fantastic. So we'll get Kendrick's number. Wow. That's our information minister. He says he will call you. Isn't that great? And this one says, uh, most of us smiles can melt any lady anytime. I simply love this guy. And that's from Sakatu from a fan called Barrier. <laughs> okay. Can you please ask uh, Mr. Hamid what his relationship with Honorable Haruna Idrisu is like? Well, he's my friend. I, I consider him a very good friend. We were with him in the student struggles, in the student movement um, before. Um, but you know, when we left school, our paths diverged, and then he went to the Star NDC. And of course, I couldn't go to the NDC, I was forbidden. 
by the law of biology <laughs> to be an NDC man. So I went to the NPP. But we continue to talk. We are, we are still very good friends, yes. You are still very good friends. Yes. Did the government force former Central Bank of Ghana government, I mean, Nashiro Ishaku to resign? The NDC says so. Well, that's not true. Um, I know that they would say that um, <clears throat> the governor himself has spoken and said that he was not forced to resign. He resigned um, by himself. Because, look, it's important for people to recognize that national governance, okay, is a very huge matter that borders on philosophies, on principles, on ideologies, okay? And therefore, if you are a bank of Ghana governor or a finance minister, for example, and you, are, you, are, you have the business of steering the economic and monetary affairs of a nation, which are all anchored on certain economic principles, which are driven by a certain precedence, economic vision and philosophy, it is important that the people who are around this economic management team are in sync with that philosophy Even and vision. This person is of, of neutral or is a professional and you believe that, well, <coughs> he has the ability to deliver. I'm coming, yes. Mm. If he has the ability to deliver and he himself feels that, okay, I can adjust my economic beliefs and philosophies to sync with that of the president, that's okay. But I believe, I was making the point that I believe that Dr. Nashiru saw that his economic principles and philosophy were diametrically opposed to those of the of the NPP. And of course, that's the truth of the matter. That, I mean, and I know Dr. Nashiru very well. I mean, he believes in the NDC ideology. He even ran for, for primaries in Tamalisa. So he has a certain orientation and a certain ideology, which is based on same social, democratic, and economic arrangements. And then we believe in liberal economic arrangements. So I believe that he saw somehow that perhaps his economic so he wasn't pushed were not, no 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 he was not pushed that at all how many cars have you seized from former appointees so far minister well um quite frankly i don't know because it's an exercise that is going on still um so the chief of staff how many thus far um i i don't know quite frankly. Put, okay. i would i would find out as, as i would <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is it true that actor john jumelo had a state vehicle with him that matter, mm. you know, I quite frankly, I, I saw it in the on Facebook, in social media, etc., etc. But for whatever reason, I didn't even bother, even though I'm information minister, to call the tax force to say that hey, is it true John Dumelo has a car? Because my philosophy about all of these things is that I try as much as possible to depersonalize these matters what i would care about is whether state cars were taken away i i do not necessarily care from whom they are collected and because it's a dumelo if it's a dumelo yes but what if it is somebody who who is not an actor or an actress why what about that you know so i didn't really put too much emphasis um on the matter to to, to go on to investigate it independently of what the tax force is doing at the end of the day when the tax force terminates its work it will definitely give me a report as information officer. I mean, that's after it has submitted its report and the government, there are aspects of it that the government wants the world to know. Of course, I will be the one to put them out and therefore I would know and then we will put it out to Ghanaians. Has former President Mahama been given an official bungalow now? Um, the President Mahama bungalow <coughs> matter beyond the letter that he wrote saying that he had given up um, his bungalow and etc etc um, but i doubt if he has been giving one an official bungalow i would know he has not he has not no all right so nana um Sewa says that is it true that the state mm -hmm. is renovating the office apartments of the first and second ladies at 15 million cities no, that also is a big fabrication. And that matter, yesterday it Someone came out, so I had time to make FM. all the necessary What calls. can you tell us now? Mm. Have they been renovated? Oh, of course. The briefing at, that at I have cost? is that at paint, they are just being painted. That's all. Enough for cost of paint. I'm not sure I should bother my head about some whatever buckets of paint mm. that would be used to paint, paint those offices. That's all that there is, especially the first lady's office. 
all is that is being done on it is the painting. Okay. That's all. Nothing as they say in Ghana, who odious. Nothing. <laughs> all right, so lots of messages. But the big one for me now that I want to tackle is the fight against Galamse. How's it panning out? Well, it's going well. Um, what it is is that as a government, it is important that set around certain projects you try to engender public agreement or public consensus. And Galamse is one of the matters about which we cannot afford to be divided because it is a matter that threatens our collective future, you know. And so because it threatens our collective future, I can see that there seems to be a general agreement that it is something that we must stamp out. And so we, on our part as a government, um, didn't want to act in ways that would, if you want, elicit disdain from certain sections of the population. Because most often in this country, when governments take certain measures that are quite drastic, people come up and say, oh, but some people's livelihoods are at stake and, and so on. But in this Galaxy matter, people understand that you cannot, for guaranteeing the livelihoods of between 200,000 to about 3 million mm. people, mm. Mm. therefore engender the future of 20... Look and at our water bodies now. Exactly. Mm. They, they virtually do not exist. Mm. You know, and people have said that if we don't stop it in 10, 15 years, we'll be importing water, water to drink in this country. So I believe that the fight is going very well. In the next few weeks, if government steps into the the theaters of operation, and are you going, going to do that? Oh, of course, hand to heart, and yes. look me in the eyes. Yes. I, I really want to know. Yes. Are you sure that President Danado yes. can ban Galamsi and Istenia straight away? Straight Star away, he will without a doubt. He's FM. determined to be known as the president who secured, or even if you want, rescued our future. Listen to this voice. NDC voting in Amgana. Samia. Me pe e juma. Ama ye mrati eni ya maba wano. Me ba. Me ba be chanka na mzimu. Nukwe baku eni mu kwa 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 kwa. Enye nukwe ne. Enye nukwe oksna. Did the president say this? <laughs> well, of course you heard him, didn't you? <laughs> so he said it. What has changed? Well, but um, two things. Two things. At that time, he was using Galamse loosely to refer to small-scale mining. That's what he was. That's what he really? referred to. Oh, absolutely. I mean, straight away. That the NDC people are saying that when I come, I'm going to ban small-scale mining. But, but he, he said Galamse. Exactly. Let's listen to the voice. Mustafa Hamid. Yes, my brother. <laughs> Are you saying that he was referring to small scale mining? Yes, he was referring to small scale mining. You see, now we are making a distinction, and we have said that. We will preserve small scale mining. We would ensure that those who have licenses to operate. You know, in, in the theaters of operation, they refer to all small scale mining apart from the big. But a lawyer like Manako Fadu, President Kalamse. Adu, should yeah. know the difference between small scale mining and Kalamse. Now say, Kri Naoka. What is the what is the key rendition of small Galamse. scale mining? Really? Hey, Kalamse. Yeah. Uh, mining Biara, and yet your friend is saying, Say, Obasi no. gold mines, nay, yeah, no. uh, no, but uh, come on, you could have said, No, my no, no, friend, not so Cassa, I knew Kinok or Catch English. So he didn't go there to speak <laughs> English, really. Of course, or Cock, not she, no, so he was referring to small, scale. Oh, quite frankly, he was referring to small scale mining. Say, if he was speaking English, yeah. that's what he would have said. And said, the say, small oh, scale. yeah, okay. the people are saying that when I come out, ban small scale, but that is not true. Oh. I'm not going to ban small scale. And of course, we have said that we are not banning small scale mining, we are banning illegal mining. So, illegal mining is not the same as small scale mining. That's all, that's all he meant. All right, 
three minutes after eight, and we'll be activating the phone lines pretty shortly. Next week, 100 days in office. Any special achievements? Well, quite frankly, the, this 100-day concept um, is not a matter that is part of our own political philosophy and arrangements. And that's why you find that in our manifesto, it, it receives no mention at all. And therefore, um, we are not going to go out of our way to, to celebrate. You have a four-year mandate. How can you be declaring victory after 100 years when you have over three years of a journey to, 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 to go through? Are, are you following me? So nothing spectacular so, on the 100 days? Um, yeah, we are not going to organize spectacular events mm. to say that, oh, we, because our government is even still being formed. DCEs have not been announced. Deputy mm. ministers were just sworn in today. today. Yeah. We need the rest of our DCEs to be voted for by district assemblies to come into place. Then we would say, okay, our government is formed. And that is why I told you at the beginning that when we went to um, Pediasi, Pediasi yeah. we went to Pediasi for three reasons. To look at our manifesto again, and then, if you want, um, develop coherent, um, if you want, areas. I mean, proper... Um, if you want focus, give focus to our government and then also to draw FM. the strategies for those achievements. So if you just came out of Pedroazi last week where you now have a coherent strategy for dealing with your problems, how could you have been declaring victory on any matter? Suffice it to say that in this past three months, on the part of the president, he has done so much to show principally and primarily that he's a president who, as he himself said, he wants to be known as a president who keeps his words. And all of those matters, nowadays there's a term around town called low-hanging fruits. You know, all of those low-hanging fruits, that those are things that you can do without going through cumbersome processes of law, of this, of that. He's done all of them. For example, he said that when he comes, that he will make sure that soldiers who go on peacekeeping operations are paid at the theater of operation rather than when they return. The Gambian operation, which is what he authorized as president, all payments were made in Gambia. He fulfilled that promise. When he came, there was a backlog of, I think, about $13.7 million that was owed soldiers from peacekeeping operations FM. from previous times and so on. He's cleared all of those 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 areas. Um, since we came, you can see, I mean, the city um, got wobbly a bit, but somehow we are getting a handle on that matter, and there's some stability um, there. Today, I've read in the papers, and I just saw it scrolling on your TV station, mm -hmm. that inflation is dropping uh, already. Um, we have cut down the cost of fertilizer in half because we are about to, to launch the planting for food and jobs. 19th April, the president will go to Gorso and launch the planting for food and jobs campaign. And so we've cut fertilizer. We'll, we'll come back. We want to activate the phone lines because already okay. we have people calling us. But you can join us on 0302-231144 or 0302-231145. We are also live in Kumasi on Ultimate 106.9 FM. In Takradi, you're listening to us on Empire 102.7 FM. In Volta Region, of course, in Ho, it's cool 103.5 FM. We have Chairman on the line from Legon. Hello, Chairman. Hello, Bola. Right. So, a very good evening to you, and you must welcome you on Star Chat, Jeremy. Thank you, Bola. Great. Let's hear you, please. Please, I'd like to ask Mr. Hamid his relationship with his mother, if she's alive, because uh, I understand at age six, uh, the mother and the father got divorced, and he had stick to his father. So, I want to know the story of his mother's side, if she is alive, the relationship with her, and if she isn't alive, she had with her. Thank okay. you. Well, thank you very much, Chairman from Legon. Felix is on the line from Abeka. Good evening, Felix. Yeah, Bola. What's up? Yes, I'm all right. And uh, you're calling from Abeka, right? Of course. Good. Mustafa Hamid is here, please. Go ahead. Well, uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir, Hamid. Good evening, sir. I admire you a lot. I'm a student of Ghana's journalism doing public relations. 
uh, mm-hmm. means we have a lot in common. I have a lot to learn from you as well. But I have this simple question, uh, and this question is not coming to you as uh, Minister of State, but as an individual as a Ghanaian. I felt a bit disappointed in the judgment that came uh, regarding uh, those who stormed the court. Uh, as compared to the military three, what is your take on this? Because those who made allegations, verbal attacks on radio, we saw the law, the strength of the law. Th- that the president is that if you attack that aspect of government, this is how far you can go. And we've seen people who have stopped court uh, and treat their members, uh, you know, an alleged group who are given less punishment. So as an individual, just like a young man like me, what is your take? Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you very much. And we have Cantref. Cantref, you know, for this batch, or Cantref is off. So please, you can go ahead. Yes. Oh, my relationship with my mother is fantastic. I mean, she's, she, she, she was in Accra from September all the way till about uh, three, four weeks ago um, when she went back um, to the north. So, I mean, I've always had a fantastic relationship with, with her. She, she married another man. And so I have fantastic half-brothers and sisters All right. um, who, with whom I'm very um, nice. Okay. And, and the I'm one from uh, Felix in Abeka on yes, the Delta Forces. The Forces judgment yes. on the Delta Forces. Um, quite frankly, because I'm not a lawyer, I don't know what goes into meeting out punishments in our courts of law. As lay persons, sometimes we sit down and we all say things like, oh, when people steal banana or plantain and so on, <laughs> they are given two years and three years and that uh, some politician, some civil servant has stolen money and has been given 10 years and so on. But uh, my understanding is that polit- uh, court judgments are not given in, um, if you want, according to mechanical arrangements. You know, there are so many factors that judges, the lawyers, I think they call them mitigating factors that will go into rendering a judgment. So whilst on the surface of it, um, you will feel that, well, this was, was a slap in the back, you know, really a mild one. But I guess that every judgment has a reason. And perhaps we would have to uh, read the reason mm. that the judge gave in order to make an informed um, we have Cantref on the line from Abeka as well. Hello, Cantref. Good evening. Good evening, Bolari. Many uh, thanks for joining us, Cantref. Let me say good evening to Dr. Mustafa Hamid. Thanks, bro. I mean, such a wonderful man. You know, I think this year, um, your chat, this particular edition, mm. has been the best to me. Wow. It's been engaging, feeling motivational. I mean, Dr. Mustafa Hamid is quite a frank person. I've enjoyed your encounter with it. I mean, especially, you know, turning adversity to success during the time is that we went in Oxford. And I think it's quite a genuine man to me. And I would want to ask him about his relationship with Dr. Okobo, the MP for Lejokoko. And I would want to say a good evening to Dr. Okobo. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Country from Abeka. Oh, um, unfortunately, Dr. Koboy is not um, one of the people that I'm really close with in the party. You know, it's a very huge party. We've met twice or thrice only, mm, I mean, face okay. to face. Right. And he said to me that he likes me and okay. he admires me. That's all he said to me. And I said, thank Mutual you. Mutual respect. Much. Yes, and, right. and I like him too. Isn't that great? All right, so tell us, how, how, how do you relax? Um, reggae music, reggae music, reggae music, reggae music. Reggae and music. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> if music is not reggae, is that Rastafari. too, is that too hard to call music? <laughs> That's what they say. Oh, really? It is this on Facebook. If it's not reggae music, it's not it's music. It's not music, I'm telling so you. So who's your favorite act? Um, Bob Marley of all time. Any day, any time. Yes, yeah. and then you can talk about culture. Culture. You know, um, those days I used to love Ika mm. Don Carlos. Wow. Um, there's this guy who sang um, Uptown Babies Don't Cry. They have mummies and daddies and nannies and grannies and a lot of toys to play with. <laughs> But we, the ghetto boys, we sell newspapers on the streets and we say, read the news, read the news, read the news. <laughs> this is Don Carlos. I love you, man. That's Don Carlos. I hope I made you easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> The 
only on Star Child. Oh, man. That's my that, that, that you see a minister yeah. dancing. And you, want, you want to do the Rastafari oh, stuff secretly. Most of all, lots of messages for you. But it's been an interesting one, I must say. Yeah, Thanks so good. much for honoring our invitation. But of course, uh, before you go, when all is said and done, how do you want to be remembered? As the guy who came through and did what? I want to be remembered as the Minister for Information who was frank and honest. You know, oftentimes, Ministers of Information are seen as the people who are supposed to lie on or people who lie on behalf of government that's how ministers of information are seen and that's why there are no popular ministers of information anywhere in the world and so but i want to be able to to turn the tide say it as it is without fear of without fear of fever. and what i don't know i say that i don't know please let me go back and check and get back to you i will stick to that principle no matter what and i will tell people what the truth is time for a mystery question quickly before we go eh. There's a mystery question. I didn't know about this one. Yes, yeah, here. And now, the mystery question. Huh. And please read it out for us, sir. Between Kwabna e Japong and Sami Krab, who would you want Nanado to appoint? To, yeah. to appoint. Okay. So, that's the question again for you is uh, between Kwabna e Japong and Sami Krab, who would you want Nanado to appoint? Kwabena Japon. Kwabena Japon. And why? Because he's the one that I have known closely. I haven't known Sami Krab that closely. And Kwabena Japon shares some of my philosophies of life. And he has some of my character. He's assertive. He's confident. He speaks well. And he speaks his mind. You want him back in the party. I can <laughs> see it in your eyes. <laughs> Given the chance, you want him back. Well, I, I want everybody back. But you asked me between two people. That's yes. why I'm talking about Kwabena. You want an to appoint him? All of them. <laughs> well, it's interesting. And, you know, as we wrap it up, somebody wants to know, how's Fazia doing? She's well. She's That's well. her second wife. That's the second, yes. Wow. She's very well. And you know what? We have a surprise for you as well. Hello? 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 How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Great, and your name is? My name is Abdul Hamid Zaki. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Abdul Hamid Zaki. <laughs> Abdul? Yes, please. You should see your dad here. I want you. I'm watching him live on Facebook. <laughs> oh, you're watching him live on Facebook? Is he? Yes, please. Ah. <laughs> Let me clean my sweat, man. You got your dad sweating. Yes. You can you can see him live on Facebook if you are watching, yes. right? All right. Yes. So your dad is here, an interesting character, a great person. Tell us how how is he like as a dad, Abdul? Mm, he's a very frank person. That's what I like, and he motivates me a lot. Oh. Motivates me a lot, and then. He doesn't stop me when I'm, I always tell people he's my first fan. Anything I do, he's my first fan. He's the first person who tell me, is that what you want to do? Then you say, okay, you do it. We will see. I will support you. Wow. That's what he always says. Wow. But, and usually people always mistake because he's in a big position. And then they usually think he influences things for me. He influences decisions for me. And those things. But he always tells me, forget them and fight for yourself. Because me, my father was it there. I was a little boy my father left. So you have to also fight even though I'm still around. Wow. Isn't, isn't that touching? What do you want to say to your son as well, Mustafa Ahmed? Well, um... Are you like, touched? I can see that now. Yeah. Wow. You know, I remember what he's saying. When he was in JHS 2, actually in JHS 2, I registered him for the SSE exam. So he jumped at JHS 3 and went to SECO. And he was senior prefect in um, JHS um, St. Peter's, and then he was senior prefect, he was boys prefect at SECO as well. And because I kept telling him, you are a Leo. I believe in, in, in those, the stars. So I said to him, you are a Leo, and Leos are winners. And I said to him, when he was in JHS, I said, if you are, nobody beats a Leo in a competition. And I said, so that is the reason God made you a Leo. And therefore, you are a winner. Anything you want, you will get it. So go for it. And I believe that has helped him. That is it. <laughs> Abdul, 
Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been great having you. <laughs> you should see your dad here. And keep on keeping on, okay? Okay. okay. I'm working on Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> Father and son, isn't that great? And that's the relationship, of course. I also want to have with my with my son. I mean, I have that with them, but I also want to strengthen that one, just like you are, you know, doing right here. But hey, we love you for what you've done. And today on the show, we have this for you. <laughs> We salute you. We say thank you, thank Honorable you much, Mustafa Hamid. Thank you. And from Echoa Champon, who's the general manager for um, My Star Radio in the USA, in Maryland. They actually, you know, being this live as well. And they're saying that kudos to you is the best interview thus far. And that's from Echoa Champon, for sure, yeah. to you. Thank you, thank Minister. you, my brother. It's been great. I'm grateful. I, I didn't turn this down. Thank you very much. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. God bless us all. And it's been great coming your way right here to my producers. Thank you. Of course, to Kwame Achampon, my super producer. Thank you, Kwame. To Seth Owari Japan. Thank you. And of course, to the whole team for making this possible. What can I say to you, Mark? To DJ Nyami and the great team right here. It's been wonderful coming away. My name is Kwabina and not here to see Bolare. God bless all of us. Have a wonderful evening. I'm out.